Hey everybody, Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. Today's video is called, So Should I Buy Cruise Ship Shares Now or Should I Wait? Uh, this is the ongoing saga, What to Do. Uh, it's uh, March the 19th, 2020, and we'll get into this story in just a sec. Thank you everybody for uh, subscribing to Traveling with Bruce. A bunch of you are following me. I really appreciate that. Welcome aboard the TWB family. Thank you for giving my video updates, thumbs ups, and also sending me your comments. I'd love to hear what you think about what I'm talking about or what you hear is going on out there. Keep me posted on what you hear. Uh, join me on my Facebook group page called Traveling with Bruce. We like to hang out there between these videos. And uh, if you ask to join the uh, Facebook group page, I'll let you in. I'm the administrator, no problemo. Also, thanks for those of you who are now following me on Instagram, Traveling with Bruce is on Instagram, and Jennifer handles that one, <clears throat> and we're having a lot of fun there. All right, well, let's talk about cruise stock. Oh, my gosh, what to do, what to do. Um, the stock market, of course, in the last uh, two weeks or so has just had a... Uh, wonderful time of it wouldn't you say um, back about a month ago in uh, February the 19th the uh, Dow Industrials were uh, uh, up in the 29,000 range and now they're at 20,000 and uh, they're trying to hang on to that who would have thought a one-third drop would happen in the overall Dow 30 for stocks like uh, Royal Caribbean a month ago the shares were trading at $114 Three months ago, two, three months ago, they were trading as high as 135. Today, you can pick up a Royal Caribbean stock at $22, plus or minus. Uh, while I'm making this video, the stock is trading and it is moving about all over the place. Uh, Norwegian Cruise Lines, uh, three months ago, $60, $61 a share. Today, $8.50 for one share of Norwegian. And for Carnival, three months ago, $50. Three odd dollars a share at one point. Today you can buy Carnival for nine dollars eighty cents on the stock exchange. Um, is now the time to buy? Isn't the old adage "buy low, sell high"? Well, uh, people have been trying to buy these shares for the last week and a half at the so-called low, and the shares just keep going lower. Of course, the strategy of the market from uh, pros out there, as they tell you. If the shares are dropping and you like the price, buy a little bit. If it drops some more, buy a little bit more. If it drops some more, buy a little bit more. And you'll eventually end up with an average price far below what they used to be at at one point. And hopefully in the long run, you'll be ahead of the game. For anyone buying these shares today, I am. my advice to you is uh, if you've got at least a one-year to three-year time frame, for a return fine um, if in the next two or three months these shares don't move much from here if they're anywhere from say minus to plus 10 or 15 percent of this current price uh, well then just just take that and sit there and don't do anything just wait it out because it might take two or three or four months for things to settle down uh, stock analysts out there are going to be reviewing uh, all of the uh, business affairs of the three major cruise lines that I'm talking about here. These are all publicly traded companies and uh, they're going to uh, rate their prospects. They're, uh, they're all going to wait, of course, like we are for the cruise lines to attempt to re restart services. Um, that, of course, is subject to a lot of factors that the cruise lines cannot directly control. And uh, one of them, of course, is the clearance to sail in and out of ports at various countries around the world. And uh, uh, it might be a one thing where a cruise line says, oh yeah, we're going to start cruising on April whatever, but if the uh, cruise ports that the cruise, cruise company wants to take their ships are not allowing ships in or out, there's not going to be any cruising. So um, we'll have to wait for you know that to settle down as well. And that's why I talk about the possibility that it might not be a quick 30-day turnaround for cruise lines to start sailing again. It might be 90 days. It might be 120 days. And with that in mind, I thought today I would mention a few things that I'm beginning to notice the cruise lines are doing. Um, they're not going to advertise this in any great uh, aggressive way uh, because this generally doesn't come off as good news. It comes off as prudent, uh, smart, 
financial news or, or moves that management makes, but it doesn't uh, doesn't warm the hearts of those of us who want to go on a cruise when we hear these kinds of stories. One of the uh, stories I've heard is that uh, Norwegian, uh, for their administrative staff, these are all the hardworking people at head office that uh, handle all of the personnel records and uh, they handle payroll for everybody. They handle... Uh, negotiations for the cruise lines with all of the cruise ports. They handle all insurance, the legals, the marketing. It just goes on and on. You need an absolute army of people at head office for these cruise lines uh, to keep everything running smoothly. Anyway, those folks, I'm hearing now that they're going to uh, suffer a 20% pay cut and they're also going to uh, be working four out of five days. And, and uh, in effect, they're working four to five days, but only getting four days of pay instead of five. And that, and that's one way the cruise line can keep a staff going without laying anyone off. This is sort of the first way to do it. You you try, uh, you know, everyone pays a little bit of a price and we all keep our jobs type of approach. Looking around, uh, I'm sure that every single employee uh, who's caught in this is probably looking around going, well, it could be worse. I, I could be totally laid off or let go, furloughed, because there are industries uh, from A to Z in the United States and other countries where they're just literally shutting down and letting everybody go. And folks have to now try to find a way to get unemployment or any kind of any other kind of aid. Here, <clears throat> the folks uh, still keep their benefits. They keep their jobs. They still work four days a week. They get 80 percent of what they're making. Um, with a, you know, they'll, they'll pay less in tax, obviously, uh, they might drop them or a level or two in the tax bracket. You never know. And that means that the actual net effect on the bottom line might not be 20%. It might only be 15%. Nonetheless, better to get 85% of your paycheck than to get nothing at all. And, uh, uh, obviously Norwegian in this particular case is doing, you know, what they can to, to minimize the, uh, the hurt to their employees. Uh, cruise lines, of course, have been announcing other uh, measures. Uh, they've announced that they have taken down their uh, lines of credit, max those out. Uh, they're building cash. Uh, I understand the other day uh, uh, Norwegian uh, brought in, I think it was over a billion and a half dollars of capital. And uh, uh, one of the Wall Street analysts uh, noted that um, they pulled $675 million and, and another 800 and something million from two separate uh, sources. And one of those two sources, uh, they literally uh, mortgaged one of their cruise ships. And uh, they have, what, 18 or 20 of them to use. So, uh, you know, they can go a while before they, uh, they really run out of money. But um, I would say, folks, uh, uh, the cruise lines can, can survive the next 90 days without too much difficulty. Uh, if this slowdown and, and shutdown goes longer than that, they'll have to make other moves uh, to, to last longer. Uh, and they will always uh, make preventative moves um, early to make sure that they have cash going forward. They're, they're monitoring their, their flow out. Now, the allure of the seas for Royal Caribbean was supposed to go into Cadiz, Spain last week to start its $165 million refurbishment, 63-day deal. The, the uh, uh, Cadiz dry dock is shut down. Spain is shut down. The workers aren't there. Um, there's a carnival ship in there right now not getting completed. And so the, uh, the allure of the seas is really out at sea right now and waiting its turn to come in. I'm assuming Royal Caribbean is still going to do this uh, refurbishment, but they could choose to delay it. I suspect, though, that they will do it because it's too late to cancel it. They've uh, probably ordered all of their um, um, uh, their new televisions and sound systems and water slides and everything. They've, they've pre-ordered everything. Everything has been manufactured now for the last year, year and a half, in anticipation of this dry dock. So uh, chances are 90 five percent high or higher that they will do the dry dock uh, for the uh, allure of the seas and that will bring that oasis ship right up to symphony of the sea standards and uh, to me uh, that's a winner because they will uh, once they begin sailing the fleet the allure of the seas will be very popular among cruisers because it's literally like being on a brand new oasis class ship so We'll follow that story and see what happens. But with respect to the rest of the cruise line, there could be um, a number of ships in uh, Royal Caribbean's fleet, Norwegians and Carnivals, 
all of the brands that these uh, cruise lines own, they may all um, decide to do a, a one-year uh, delay on all future um, um, refurbishments. And that could, in effect, save, oh, a billion dollars in cash between the three uh, cruise lines of expenditures that they won't put out. Uh, they may they may have schedules, they likely have schedules going forward for the next two, two to three years for dry docks. They might delay all of them by one year, just push everything back by a full year. Um, I've seen, you know, I can see this happening if, if absolutely necessary. We'll, we'll follow it. As far as new ships are concerned coming in, new ships that are under construction right now will continue to be built. They will be completed. Uh, financing's already been arranged. Uh, the, the, the ships are, are all, uh, you know, fully funded and, and ready to, to, to go into business. The cruise lines are already receiving deposits, cash on hand, for the new ships that they're announcing. Uh, for the case, in the case of a celebrity, the Apex, for example, uh, the ship was completed over a month ago, two months ago even, and they delayed the naming cer- ceremony and they've delayed its first cruise. But the ship is ready to go into business in a moment's notice. So once uh, the uh, cruise lines are back up and running, the Apex will quickly be put into service. They might even start selling uh, sailings on the ship before even doing a, a full-blown opening ceremony for the ship. They might do that in the second month. Uh, there, There is money in the bank already in, uh, in uh, uh, Celebrity's case. For the Apex, just like the um, Celebrity Edge cruise ship, that that ship, the Edge, had in effect pre-sold its first two years of its cruises uh, and had virtually had the money in the bank already before it even hit the water. So uh, the Apex is a winner and an asset, a, a winning asset for uh, Celebrity, which is owned by Royal Caribbean. So um, the Mardi Gras for the uh, uh, for Carnival, people are wondering, oh, will that ship ever make it? Oh, yes. That ship is very far down the line getting done. It will be in the water later this year. It will be delayed a little bit because of these delays we see now, but no worries. The deposits on hand for the uh, Mardi Gras are uh, in the probably in the tens of millions, if not over $100 million already in the bank for Carnival. That ship is a moneymaker already. Uh, as soon as it starts sailing, it, it instantly makes money for the cruise line. Uh, uh, Carnival will do quite well with it. A second one will be built uh, pr- pretty well right away. There won't be any delay on getting the second one started, I doubt. And um, uh, Carnival would rather, I can bet you, they would rather retire older ships first. Even if they had to retire four of their oldest ships uh, to bring these two in, they'll do it. Because these two are running on liquid natural gas, uh, far more uh, uh, economic to run uh, because of their size, 5,200 passengers per ship. Um, these are money makers the moment they hit the water. So cruise lines are adapting and evolving as we speak. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, talk out there, uh, uh, debating between uh, conservationists and environmentalists and cruise fans about how dirty cruise ships are and how damaging they are, when in reality there are barely 400 of them out there and there are, gosh, thousands and thousands of container ships out there that are much older burning the worst of the bunker fuel you can imagine and are constantly running 24 7 around the world um and they get off scot-free when it comes to criticism where cruise ships are an easy target because people go on them and uh, people there's people shaming going on with these cruise ships but the cruise lines are uh, quite active in uh, regenerating and refurbishing their fleets and refreshing their fleets. And so all these new cruise ships coming out of these uh, shipbuilding yards for the last couple of years and for the next number of years are going to be so much cleaner uh, when it comes to comparing a cruise ship from 30 or 40 years ago. And uh, uh, don't be fooled. These cruise lines aren't going anywhere. They're, uh, they're going to be um, in business a long time. So as a shareholder or as an investor, what do you do? There's the question. Um, like I said, if you've got a year to three years, um, I would nibble at these shares, especially down here. Um, now that they're, uh, two of them are under 10 bucks a piece in Royal Caribbean at 21 odd dollars, 22 odd dollars. I would nibble on these shares now. Um, put them away. Uh, enjoy the shareholder credit while the cruise lines are offering them. I don't see cruise lines taking these shareholder credits away, by the way. And if you don't know what a shareholder credit is, if you're going on, say, a one-week cruise on any of the uh, cruise lines that uh, Carnival has or, say, uh, Royal Caribbean has, Norwegian, uh, you'll get a $100 cabin credit uh, being a cruiser uh, on, on their cruise line just because you're a shareholder. And uh, 
uh, this this is a good deal because if you take two or three cruises a year in three or four years uh, you'll get so many credits that's worth more than what you paid for the stock in res with respect to Norwegian and Carnival if you take a 15 day cruise or longer uh, these cruise lines will give you anywhere from 200 to 250 dollars in cabin credits every time you take a cruise so I think you can really enjoy uh, some nice benefits there anyway that's a shareholder benefit uh, will the shares pay a dividend? I doubt it. They'll probably cancel their dividends for now under extraordinary circumstances, but they will attempt to bring them back when they can. But that might be a year out. But uh, realistically, you buy Norwegian at uh, eight and a half, nine bucks a share, and in the next year or two, they're trading at 20, 25, or 30. Um, you've taken three or four cruises, and you've received three, four, or five hundred dollars in shareholder credits. Your stock has tripled in price. Um, you tell me what other stock can give you that kind of benefit. Uh, this, this is a, these are shares you can ride. You can ride these shares, baby. Get out there. Um, anyway, it's something to consider. Um, airline stocks, hey, there might be opportunity there. Hotel stocks, opportunities there. Um, healthcare stocks and uh, and everything else. I mean, there's there's whatever segment of the market you like. If you're a long-term investor, these are good days to be a buyer. Um, whether you're in a position to be one, that's the question. Anyway, there you go. There's my uh, two bits worth. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, stay warm, stay safe, stay healthy out there, everybody. And we'll talk to you later, everyone. Bye for now.